after the latest explosion of Ship 25 and Booster SpaceX is now once again on the path to applying for a license for the launch of Starship Flight 3. However, there is a good sign about this period. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service conducted an assessment of the Boca Chica, Texas area after Starship's launch, which took place from SpaceX's Starbase launch facility in South Texas on November 18th. The flight achieved significantly more milestones than the first, including keeping the area Area much cleaner. Some small pieces of debris were observed but are easily removable, a representative for the FWS said in a statement. The main impact noticed by staff was to the tidal flats which occurred when the public entered the area for several hours to watch the launch, the representative added. Foot traffic, chairs, and off-leash dogs can impact this sensitive habitat. The Wildlife Agency's assessment is significant for SpaceX which received criticism over the amount of debris it spread on nearby land during the first Starship launch back in April. The Federal Aviation Administration oversaw a mishap investigation into the last launch and required a number of site changes before granting approval for the latest flight. SpaceX's Starbase launch facility is located next to a wildlife refuge that includes tidal flats. The FWS said that it will work with SpaceX to educate the public on preserving the flats as well as potentially coming up with alternative viewing locations for the public to watch the next launch. After Starship's first test flight, spread chunks of debris and pulverized concrete over hundreds of acres of nearby landscape, SpaceX opted to add massive steel plates underneath the Starship's launch mount that gushed large amounts of water upward. Known as a water deluge system, the apparatus is designed to absorb and mitigate the intense forces and heat created by Starship's Raptor engines at takeoff. SpaceX was also pleased with how the deluge system worked for the second test flight. CEO Elon Musk posted on his ex-social media site that the launch pad was in great condition and that the deluge system required no refurbishment ahead of the next launch attempt. Musk has also said the Super Heavy Booster and Starship spacecraft will likely be ready for a third test flight in three to four weeks, according to a Sunday post on social media, adding that there are three ships in final production. Indeed, there are four Starship spacecraft and at least two Super Heavy Boosters, which are visible from public roadways near SpaceX's facility in South Texas. It's not clear, however, how long it'll take SpaceX engineers to review the data gathered during Saturday's flight and implement the necessary changes. Also unclear is whether SpaceX will have the necessary regulatory approvals to launch another test flight in just a few weeks. The FAA, which licenses commercial rocket launches, indicated its intentions to open a standard mishap investigation into Saturday's test flight. After the first test flight in April, a similar investigation took over four months to complete. Once the investigation is closed, the federal agency then will likely need to complete a safety review of SpaceX's plans for a third launch before it'll issue another permit. It's not clear how long that process might take. We're all just hoping now that, well, they'll act now. The top two lawmakers on the U.S. Senate's Space and Science Subcommittee are pushing federal regulators to accelerate the approval of commercial space launches, arguing that the current pace could cost the United States its edge in the new space race. In a letter sent last week to the head of the Federal Aviation Administration's commercial space flight office, Senators Kirsten Sinema and Eric Schmidt implored FAA Associate Administrator Kelvin Coleman to act now to eliminate red tape and reduce delays in processing launch and return to Earth or re-entry licenses. As the pace of launches from U.S. commercial space flight companies increases and China's state-backed space industry continues to grow, it is imperative that the processes at the FAA and other federal agencies adapt to keep pace with American innovation as well as as adversarial threats in space, the senators wrote in a letter dated November 14th. The FAA's Office of Commercial Space Transportation is responsible for upholding public safety while simultaneously greenlighting a growing number of commercial space launches, which have quadrupled in just four years. The FAA has already licensed 104 launches this year compared to 26 launches in 2019. Keeping pace with industry demand is a priority and is important for several reasons, including meeting our national security and and civil exploration needs, an FAA spokesperson said in a statement. We're working diligently to attract, hire, and retain additional staff. In their letter, the senators named NASA's commercial partners involved in the agency's flagship human spaceflight program and urged Coleman to fast-track high-priority missions, such as returning Americans to the moon. Musk's SpaceX is responsible for developing the Lunar Lander, the HLS variant of the Starship, that will ferry astronauts to the surface of the moon for the first time since the Apollo program. 
The remarks came as SpaceX was the subject of a lengthy environmental review by the FWS and a safety review by the FAA after the company's first test flight of its massive moon rocket exploded about four minutes after lifting off in April. Regulators gave SpaceX the green light to proceed last week, and the company completed a partially successful second test flight on Saturday. With many milestones left to hit, it's clear that even if the next Starship test flight is wholly successful, a moon landing will remain on the distant horizon. Musk previously acknowledged in 2020 that he hopes SpaceX will launch hundreds of missions with satellites before attempting a flight with crew. SpaceX also must build and test the versions of Starship that will serve as refueling tankers. A lander must also be outfitted with life support equipment. And NASA will require Starship to make an uncrewed test landing on the moon before allowing its astronauts on board. Still, SpaceX emphasized that explosive failures can be integral to its development process, which embraces fiery mishaps in the early stages of designing a rocket in order to learn how to build a better rocket faster than if the company solely relied on ground tests. Though SpaceX's failed test flights garner plenty of critics, it does not mean that the company is moving more slowly or costing more money than if NASA had attempted to develop a lunar lander itself. When all said and done, NASA will pay SpaceX about $4 billion for two lunar landings. The company has already invested more than $3 billion in developing its South Texas launch facility and the Starship Super Heavy launch system since 2014, according to an FAA court filing dated May 19th. NASA astronaut Christina Hammett Koch spoke during a Washington media gathering on May 18th of 2023 as NASA astronauts Victor Glover and Reed Wiseman, as well as Canadian Space Agency astronaut Jeremy Hansen, look on. Wiseman, Glover, Hammett Koch, and Hansen are expected to fly around the moon on NASA's Artemis II flight test slated for 2024. For comparison, the Space Launch System rocket and Orion spacecraft that NASA developed for the Artemis program have together costed more than four. $44 billion since 2006, according to data aggregated by the nonprofit Planetary Society. That rocket system had its first flight test last year, and under NASA's current plans, the SLS and Orion would transport astronauts from Earth to lunar orbit, while Starship would complete the final leg of the journey, ferrying them from the Orion spacecraft to the moon's surface. But Hale noted that SpaceX doesn't use the same development approach as NASA. The space agency spends years on careful design and rigorous ground testing. All but guaranteeing success on the first flight. In contrast, SpaceX wants to put early prototypes in the air, accepting that they may explode, but will likely provide valuable information for future testing. This is a different paradigm, Hale said, of Starship development. The government, when you're working with taxpayers' dollars, you really want to be careful and make sure you succeed. Whereas SpaceX is a private company, Hale added. Yes, they're doing this work in support of the government, but their methodology is quite different. And I think you could be successful either way, but this way certainly has its exciting moments. All in all, SpaceX needs to have as many Starship launch windows as possible. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up today and become a patron to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.